morning everyone lots of you here nice and early hi Alex first in um, and Mary on YouTube hello to everybody um, so Christian and Elizabeth and Glennis and Patricia and Karen and Elaine um, Denise and Dawn and Marion sorry if I missed anybody this morning it's, uh, it's always busy on a Saturday morning isn't it um, I was a bit concerned to be honest because just as we were about to go live for a test on uh, Facebook earlier it decided to update itself doesn't look the same to me anymore, but I'm glad you're all there anyway. Uh, morning, Mary and Renfrew, um, Angela, Linda, Tina. No Facebook. Oh, I've got a Facebook from here. Um, it's over 149 people, so we should be okay now. Um, oh, Elaine's entered Maddie in the craft fair, a beauty contest for rag dolls. Oh, let me know how you get on. I hope she wins. Uh, well, why would she not, to, to be honest? Morning, Doreen. Um, and Jackie and Debbie Stevens. A few new things to show you on the website. You may have had your um, uh, newsletter go out this morning. Um, if you are having problems logging on, let me know. Um, the, the web designers are working on emails next week. Um, so meanwhile, you may not be getting your reset links, but I can do it for you. So obviously not for another hour or so, because I'm here. Um, but if you want to drop me an email, um, on the link that's on the newsletter that you had sent out. There should be 8,000 of you that had those sent out this morning. That's going to keep me busy, isn't it? Um, then do let me know if you've got any issues. Um, new website's going down really well, though. It's, it, we're really getting there with it. So it's taken a, a bit more time to perfect than anticipated, but it's going to be worth it. It looks amazing. Overcast, Sue says, in Manchester. It's nice and sunny here. Nice, nice kind of um, not too hot dog walking day, I'm thinking. Hello, Louise in Singapore. Hi, Anne. Anne still on another Anne still on holiday. Um, we get oh, Amirag, um, Amirag. Oh, I mean, a sensual posh then. Amirag, um, yes, we're very good. Thank you here. I hope you are too. Um, hello, Samudu in Sri Lanka. Morning, Anne Elizabeth. And um, oh, oh, Jamri's just having a transfusion. So the nurse can learn, oh, hello, you and your nurse. Um, oh, how long does that take? Oh, gosh, I don't think, I don't think we've ever had a transfusion um, viewer before. Oh, well, you never know, do you, I suppose. Anyway, this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Um, we do have a few of those little handles left. You remember, if you were watching on Thursday, um, we launched them there. In fact, they only came in on Thursday. So there's two handles. And we <laughs> we had comments like, oh, large earrings or posh handcuffs. No, no what sort of people you are. Um, but they're, they're really pretty. But I wanted to make something that is bigger than you'd expect for a little handle. So I'm kind of thinking, sorry, I can't see, can't see my cameras here. Bear with me a minute. Um, that way you can see it, lovely. When I first saw them, I just thought, right, they're going to make quite a little purse. So they might be quite nice to just slip your wrist through, um, you know, bridesmaids or evening pouches and things like that. But I wanted to make a bag that is a little bit more roomy than you'd expect from a small handle like that. So that's what we're going to be doing. Um, I've made this one in the rose gold faux leather. And this is the Art Gallery Full Bloom fabric um, to line it. But the one I'm going to make today is going to be in Christmas fabric because... There have been so many of you buying so much Christmas fabric. I think, I think we're all in the mood for a bit of the, the festive season in August. <laughs> so we'll do that in a bit. Um, thank you, Sarah. Uh, and another, oh, Sarah. Um, good morning from Belfast. Hello, Margaret. Um, Bernadette, the, we, we've had problems with emails going out. That's what we are looking at at the moment. But we've got your order, don't worry. Um, so anything that you... Anything that you ordered early yesterday would have gone. Late yesterday is going to go out on Monday morning. Um, so don't worry about that. It's, uh, they're, they're all there. So everything's, everything's been fixed. Um, oh, thank you, Christy. Mary says there's still no Facebook. Mary, we've got, we've got nearly 300 people watching on Facebook, so I don't think we've got an issue. Not down here, anyway. Hello, Karen in Ohio. We had another. Sorry, I missed that earlier on these mess the messages just kind of scroll through so i do miss an awful lot of them i'm afraid um christian says i ate gremlins i ate gremlins too oh Kay's, Kay's, Kay was on the cruise ship in the channel oh how lovely <laughs> right let me show you before we get going 
a few new things. We've got some, th this is lovely fabric actually. When it came in, it's a Dashwood Studio um, and it's called Full Moon. It's a Halloween fabric. And when it came in, I just thought, what, what a pretty floral fabric. Um, I'd only came in yesterday and um, Kim messaged me this morning just saying, can we photograph this fabric so I can get it on the website before we go live? And she called it Halloween and I thought, this, we've got the wrong fabric. This is pretty floral. And it's actually really clever because when you look closely, there's, there's little schools in it. Look, I never even noticed that when I first saw it. So there's little schools, there's spiders' webs, the schools on the, um, on the butterflies. So it's really subtly, but it doesn't scream out Halloween at you, does it? It's just, they, they look like spots. Look, there's even a school inside there. Didn't even notice that. Oh, and look, look, those are schools. I think that's, that is so much fun, isn't it? <laughs> These are little schools. I'm not normally a fan of, um, you know, the, oh, what do they call it? Um, the schools with the flowers and everything on, can't remember. Um, or anything that's really blatantly Halloween like that. But I just, I thought this was really fun. It put a smile on my face because it's, it's so subtle. Um, now Dashwood Studio, premium quality fabric as well. It feels really lovely. I mean, I'd wear that because <laughs> it's not too, it's not too scully, if you know what I mean. Um, but I picked that one to show you specifically because we've got a new bundle coming up in a sec. And there are a couple of new um, canvases as well, uh, which are these ones. They have been on there for a couple of days. Um, this one is ochre gold. See how well they go. And this one is the Delft Blue. Delft Blue has been incredibly popular. We put it on, didn't announce it, and um, it's been selling like hotcakes. It's a really lovely colour. Um, so those are, those are quite... Day of the Dead, that's it, Elaine. Thank you. Yeah, not normally a fan, but this is, it's not like Day of the Dead, is it? It's a lot more subtle. Um, thank you, Susan. Yes, Day of the Dead. Pre pretty Halloween. Pumpkin head eyes. Pumpkin head eyes, yes. It's lovely. Anyway, I wanted to show you that one particularly because we've managed to get another bundle of 10 half metres of fabric for you. We haven't had these in for a long time. We just haven't been able to get them cut and put together. But we have now. So this is a brand new bundle. You, you might have seen some of the colours before, but not in this configuration. And let me show you how much you get. They're all 100% cotton and they're 140 centimetres wide by half a metre. So you've got 10 of those for 29.99. If you go to um the home page and just scroll down to start seeing fabrics it should be there because it just went on this morning um, and it's called the essential plane pack so again there's 10 of those that only works out at three pound per half meter which i think is amazing um, and color wise that's that delft kind of blue again but i just wanted to show you how things mix and match because this picks out the color of the blue in here and then there's the bright red. There's reds in here as well. And then there's the lemon. Don't think that goes with this one particularly. Um, but there's a teal green. The bright orange, that's gorgeous. That goes as well. Pale pink, even that goes. There's a pink in here. Mint green, that kind of picks up on these grey tones here. And then there's a sky blue. There's purple. And you've got a forest green as well. So all 10 of those are £29.99. Um, I know we've brought you pairs of fabrics before, the perfect pairs and things like that. We'll be doing some more of those in the future. Um, but you can never have enough planes, I don't think. Um, because I, I don't know about you, and I know I've said it before, I don't buy one fabric on its own as a general rule. I want something to coordinate with it. Um, so if I'm going to make a bag and I want a lining, I want a fabric that contrasts with it. If I'm making um, a jacket, maybe I'll put a different contrast fabric underneath the collar or a vera on the pockets. So it's always nice to have something kind of in stock, if you like, that you know is going to match. And with all of those 10 colours, you're pretty sure it will. Thank you, Sarah. I think so. Chile and Preston. Um, Annika, let me just see translation on that one. I don't know what that means. Um, come on, Facebook, hurry up. Oh, is Lisa that Morning. Morning, Lisa. All the colours are looking so beautiful. She says, oh, thank you, Annika. That's, that's very nice of you. Right. Do some sewing. Should we do that? Shall we? Okay. So, there we go. Mm, 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 m
Mm. Where should I put those? I'll put those down there. Need more space, me thinks. Um. <laughs> Chilly and pressed and her feet are freezing, says Nicola. Okay, so again, the bag that I'm going to make is this one. Um, we're not getting any more of these handles in. If you, if you weren't watching on Wednesday, they're half price. Um, when you get them home, if you look very closely, there are imperfections in the pearls, in the beads, on some of them. There's none on those, actually. I was going to show you one, but there's none on those. Those are perfect. Um, so when you get them home, if you look under a magnifying glass, you may see imperfections on them. But we've, we've put them at half price, so, um, so that, that's why. So anyway, that's that. So I'm going to use um, the, I think this is traditional Holiday Stars gold because I thought it looked well with the pearls and the gold. I thought the colours matched. And then for a lining, um, I'm going to use red. So I've already cut, I don't have the pattern for my top Margaret because I didn't make it, I bought it. Um, oh, blazing hot in Dalton in the, in the US of A. Iced sweet tea, oh how lovely. Alison's late again. Right, I've cut these two pieces and I have actually um, photographed the bag as I was making it. I've done some step-by-steps this morning, so I didn't have time to actually, um, so I just need to cut that in half, um, edit it all together and post it, but I'll try and get that on the website later on today. So you will have all of your written instructions. I'm not going to do a video for YouTube on this one on its own because by the time I do that, the handles will be sold out. Um, but I will put the step-by-step -step instructions on there anyway. Um, hello, Ellen. First time for June Doyle. Say hello to June Doyle. Welcome along. Nice to have you. Anyway, I've cut two pieces of the outer fabric which measure 10 inches by 15 inches, sorry, 15 inches by 10 inches, 15 inches wide, 10 inches deep. And the red fabric is 15 inches wide and it's 10 and a half inches deep because there's a border that goes around the top. So that's the extra. And then for the straps, these measure two and a half inches wide by a length that I can't remember. And if I had my ruler handy, I would measure it for you. Where on earth? I should measure on my cutting mat then. Ah, ah. It's on the floor. Bear with me a sec. We're all good, thanks, Kaz. Um, Michaela's in bed with three cats. So I'm picking up a ruler if you just joined us. Not hiding from you. Um. <laughs> oh. Good news after a heart attack. Oh, good, good. Wet and windy in India. Oh, so those are two and a half inches by 12 inches. And I'm going to trim the ends of those in just a second. Um, I'm not going to use um, a fusible fleece or anything too thick on this. I didn't use any kind of interfacing on that bag. I didn't think it needed it with it being the, uh, the faux leather. Um, on this one, I'm going to use some G700. So it's a lightweight or medium weight interfacing. So it's not, it's not too stiff. I wanted the bag to be quite soft on this one. Morning, Jean. Um, so this is just like having another layer of cotton, basically. So let's switch the iron on would help. Oh, Lucy, what's the performance tomorrow? She's preparing a costume, she says. All right, so nice hot iron for this. And I'm just putting it on the outer pieces. Sue's making a top, lovely. Could I use the plain bundle for the half yard quilt? Uh, mm -mm. Yes, yes you could do. Um, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. You need 10 fat quarters You've actually got 10 half metres here, so you should have enough for two. But you will need um, black fabric as well, if you wanted to use the black as the backing fabric. I can't remember offhand how much you need, but it's something like three and a half metres, I think. That's quite a lot of black fabric. Is it that much? can't remember. 
But yes, you should have enough in that bundle to make the Seminole quilt. Okay, so I'm just ironing this onto the wrong side. I'll show you the difference actually before I do the other one. Because when you, if you're going to go for an interfacing like this, it doesn't always feel um, very sturdy. But it does make a difference. Morning, Alana. All right, let's just chop this out. Oh, token a half yard club. Remember, if you are a half yard club member, you get your 10% discount on the Debbie Shaw Sewing website. Um, you'll need to type in the code, which is on the half yard club page, in capital letters when you go to checkout and you get 10% off anything. Thank you, Patricia. This is really, I've got quite a lot of tops this shape. They are really comfy. Um, that's all right, Helene. Happy to help reset anybody's passwords. If you're having trouble logging into the website, that's the debbieshawsewing.com website. Um, it, that, that's for people, I think, mainly who we had as subscribers on the previous website. So when we carried over all of the information, it carried over your password, which needs to be changed because it's a new website. Um, and, uh, well, a few of you have had some issues changing passwords. So we're working at that from our end. But again, as I said earlier, if you wanted to get in touch with me on the customer service email address, which you should have had on your newsletter today, then just let me know. I'll get on with that this afternoon. Right, so I've done oh, done one piece. I'll do the other in a second. But let me just show you the difference. So without interfacing, that's really soft. After, it's not stiff, but it's a lot firmer. So it's not exactly going to stand on its own, but it's a lot firmer than just a one piece of cotton. So let's put that on the other one. Um, can I get your advent calendar book? The, the advent calendar book has been discontinued, Julie. Um, so I don't know if there's any left on Amazon um, or maybe eBay or somewhere like that. I haven't got any copies, I'm afraid. So um, no, they, they discontinued two of my books. Gutted. <laughs> Everything comes to an end, I suppose. It's like they discontinue fabric after a while, don't they? Still, there's, there's still 23 out there, so I'm not too concerned. Hello Kathleen from Illinois. <laughs> Susan, it always costs a fortune when you pop out to buy a loaf of bread if your grocery store's on the way past a fabric store, I'm thinking. Linda's been to the dog groomers. Did you take the dogs? Or you just fancied a poodle cut? Um, so, Mandy, I will put the, um, the instructions on my... Um, website later on this afternoon when I've written then if that helps. Um, I'm in inches, I'll put them in centimetres there as well so I don't know what you use but this is 15 inches across by 10 inches deep for the outer fabric, 15 inches across by 10 and a half inches deep for the lining fabric. But of course you can make it bigger or smaller, that's, that's up to you. It doesn't have to be exactly that size. Okay, so that's that. Let's just iron the edges here. Pauline's making three waistcoats for mini ushers for the oh, for some's wedding. Oh, how lovely! Oh, thank you, Amanda. They just do that every now and again. I think as soon as sales start to dip or something new comes along, then they just continue it. Um, the other one that's been discontinued is the very first one I ever wrote, which is making cushion covers. Oh, Chrissy, sorting up. You know when you're sorting out your fabric, though, you just look at it and put it back again, don't you? Um, this Jill is an I. It is nine and interfacing. It's G700. It's a Valiseline G700. So it is actually a woven interfacing, and it's fusible. The scratchy side has got the glue on it, but you can you can actually see there it is a woven interfacing. So it's like having another layer of cotton on the back of your fabric. Right, let's sew these together. I oh, wouldn't, I need more space. I need a bigger studio. We're going to sew one lining piece to one outer piece just across the top. And then the same with, with the other one. Machine stop picking up the bobbin thread. Have you, and it might sound obvious, have you, um, have you re-threaded your machine to start with? I don't know why that would be happening. 
And so re-thread re the top, re-thread the bobbin, thread and try again. Otherwise, I don't know, have, uh, what machine have you got? Can you get in touch with the manufacturers? So I know if you've got something like a brother or Janome or an Elmer that they've got a helpline. And I don't think you have to be in warranty to, to ask the question anyway. Unless anybody else has had that problem and could advise. So lining sewn to the top of the outer, we do the same with the other one. Lovely when you have a chat to each other, Olive Ann chatting away to, to Sarah. It's um, 320, I can't see how many of us on YouTube, but it's, it's so nice to see um, the same names popping up every week as well. I feel, feel like we've got a little sewing club going on here on a Saturday morning. Sarah's got wood for a new sewing room worktop, yes. We're having a revamp, not in here. This, this needs a bit, a bit of painting and a bit of furniture, to be honest. But um, seeing as a Singer patchwork, oh, you should be able to get in touch with Singer. They should be able to help you. They've got a helpline and patchworks aren't very old machines, are they? Um, oh, yes. <laughs> Who was that? Sorry. Um, Patricia, well, well spotted. I just saw a message saying wrong sides, I think. Oh, what do you mean? It means I've sewn them the wrong sides together, isn't it? And I can't find me quick on pick. Saturday night, where are you, Cindy? He said it's Saturday night. I know, Anne. That's what happens when I'm, I'm, I'm chatting. It's your fault. If you, you know, if you weren't putting messages up on there, then I'd be concentrating on what I'm doing, would I not? Oh, Janine, welcome along. Don't do this with fine fabrics because you'll tear the fabric. So right sides together, we're going to sew at the top of the lining to so if it wasn't live I'd just edit that out and you'd think I was sewing perfectly every time. Jane's going to have a workshop. Go into a workshop, sorry. No Alison, we're not doing it. I think everybody got so frustrated with this move for going on so long that um, everything kind of fell apart a little bit. So we could start all over again but we've decided it's not been a very pleasant experience this year with trying to buy and sell houses, so we're going to leave it a bit. Thus, having my office done up. You don't see that, I'll have to show you that. So I'll show you when, when it's done up. Um, they've got quite a, quite a big office with the, the PCs and the cutting table and storage and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about. I missed the start of that conversation. Um, so yes, and, and that's what we're having done up. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a tour when we're all finished. Morning, Christine, that's gone cold. Right, then we're going to sew these together, right sides together, matching the seams. And I'm going to leave a gap in the bottom of the lining so I can turn it the right side out. Now, when I'm matching the seams at the side here I'm going to put them both facing upwards so I'm not going to twist them or press them open they're both going to face upwards or away from the um, the outer fabric and match the seams because if you don't it will be noticed so let's just sew around here thanks Michaela hopefully that's helped that may well be the problem Sarah loves a tour. I love a tour. I can be a little nosy. I like to see what other people are doing. I'm just using the edge of the foot for a seam allowance as well. So around about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And I don't tend to pin. Oh, I don't know about the before, Leslie. It's a bit of a mess. <laughs> We've already kind of started. And I've just got boxes and boxes of stuff that I've emptied out of cupboards because we've got rid, of, got rid of a lot of the cupboards that were in there. So they're just in um, those really useful storage boxes. And it's always the, the, the fabric in the bottom box that you need, isn't it? Um, 
Hello, Lynn in Wigan. Now, if um, we are looking at the email issue, there's, there's been a few people that haven't received confirmation and shipping emails off the website. Um, I'll double check we've got your order, if, if that's OK. But the web designers are looking at that next week. So hopefully that will all be sorted then. Right, so don't forget to leave the gap. And I'm going to box the corners on this as well. You could round the corners, actually. That might be quite pretty. Right. How do I switch off subtitles? Um, Dawn, I think you do that on your end. I, I, don't, I don't put subtitles on anything. Can anybody help Dawn, who wants to take subtitles off her Facebook feed? Yeah, Sheila, it's, um, I started off like that with a very small space on the dining table, but when it becomes your way of life, there's more sewing areas in our house than there is um, uh, living areas. Okay, so we've got this. I'm going to box the corners. So, <laughs> what? Do you, oh, honestly, Deborah, today, what are you playing at? Did I not say, don't forget to leave a gap? Did I leave a gap? No! One of those days when I need a quick unpick every five minutes. <laughs> no, Helen, I didn't. Patricia, I know. Must concentrate. Actually, I've, I was making that bag and photographing it all morning this morning, so I was, I was a little rushed. I know, Anne. I know, Joyce. The gap. Honestly. Good job it's not live, isn't it? That will do. <laughs> so, put my hand inside. You've seen this a hundred times before, but if you haven't, um, we're going to match up the side seam with the bottom seam. We're going to squish those seams in opposite directions to cut down on the bulk. And we can stick a pin in here. pin cushion somewhere and then I'm going to measure um, let's say an inch and a half from the point so I've got the line on my ruler going straight across so I know that this is a right angle triangle oh no that's gonna be a bit too big let's do an inch right across where the pin is And then we're going to sew across there. Let's do the same on all of those corners. So when I come to the second corner here, the seam's already squished that way from the first one. So I'm going to keep that the same way so it's not twisted. And you can feel when those two are lined up. I'll have another pin. And an inch from the end. And we'll do that on all four corners. <laughs> Bridget wasn't really angry. She hit the angry button, the angry face by mistake, she said. You do, I, that's absolutely right, Anne, yes. I, I do deliberately, very occasionally, make these, these mistakes just to see if I'm keeping you on your toes. <laughs> and I am. Um, so the dart and a lace jacket on the outside. See, that could be a, a, a design feature. You pay a fortune for things like that on the King's Road. Same on this one. Just made two messenger bags for the grandchildren. Um, then they wanted pause pockets names after I'd... Oh. All right, let's pull that out. pin and sew. Then we'll sew all of those corners to make them all square. Oh, isn't it frustrating when you sew, when you find out after you've sewn, particularly if it's been quite a difficult, you've sewn around a curve or something like that, and then you realise there's no bobbin thread. 
Right. So we sew straight across all of these and we'll have a nice square base to my bag. Thank you, Sarah. It's only a bit of sewing, isn't it? There's no point in letting things go to your head. Lots of um, advice for Dawn about the um, um, the captions. Sorry, mind went. Thank you for that. The stitches and love, I don't suppose they would dare for you. <laughs> I, uh, they, uh, my stitches do tend to listen to me. I have a rather bellowing, angry voice. It doesn't happen very... We were talking about this the other day, actually. It doesn't happen very often, but when it does, you don't often know. I, I can remember when I was um, working at um, Ideal World as a presenter. This is going by years. I don't, I don't get cross. I don't get annoyed. I don't have a temper. I don't swear. I'm quite calm and laid back. And if things go wrong, then hey-ho, they go wrong and um, things don't normally bother me. But I'd been presenting a jewellery show, a silver jewellery show with a guest who come over all the way from America. And it wasn't selling very well, it wasn't doing very well at all. So my producer in my ear all um, decided to bring in some gold jewellery. So I'm sat here and the guest flown in all the way from America um, was sat here and then this gold jewellery started coming in and I was so annoyed because I hadn't seen it before. How can you sell something if you don't know all about it? Um, and my guest was getting really embarrassed because he could see what was going on. So his jewel was kind of moved out of the way and this gold stuff being brought in. He eventually started reaching over for the gold and started really you know, saying that it's um, oh, it's too expensive and you don't get the quality and it, it was it was awful. The whole thing was really awful, um, and there was no need for it. And because it had come such a long way, I mean, it cost a fortune to come over here, and um, and it, it, it was just awful. So I, I I did get annoyed. So I went up into the office afterwards, and I said my piece rather loudly, and uh, the producer just stepped back into said oh my you mean it don't you I thought, is it, that, that must be the whole time in the 11 years i worked there that i'd actually raise my voice to anybody <laughs> um anyway how did we get onto that one let's turn this the right side out <laughs> Debbie, you do have, oh no, 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 not the Half Yard Club, they're completely separate websites. Um, Half Yard Club's are nothing to do with Debbie Shaw sewing, your passwords, everything else, completely different. So no, don't, don't do anything with the Half Yard Club, it's just the Debbie Shaw sewing website you need to reset. Okay, so we have this with an earl in the bottom of the lining, so let's sew that closed. <laughs> for goodness sake I do that I think that's as um, as as bad as I guess as, as far as language is concerned for, for goodness sake but that's the kind of thing I say to myself like when I don't leave the hole when I've just said don't forget to leave the hole goodness sake a large bin oh I've got a bin down here <laughs> that doesn't all go on the floor I have got a bin down there <laughs> Although the floor is a bit messy, to be fair. Uh, don't ever make Debbie angry. Oh, no. <laughs> Lisa's seen me like that. I know, turning green and purple and all kinds of things. Yeah, you don't, don't make me angry. Right, what have I done there? I've just knocked something on Facebook that's come up saying warning. Are you still there on Facebook? What have I done? Oh, I'm sorry about that. I seem to have just pressed, well, I, I knocked my mouse and um, seemed to have disappeared from Facebook. Fancy doing that. Sorry, do bear with me on YouTube. I've, I, I don't know what I've done there. may have to reset on Facebook, honestly. Meanwhile, I'm just going to push this lining inside here. Um, the changes won't be saved. No. 
I've, I have, look, I've gone, and, I've gone and chopped it off. Not done that before. We've had a few issues, but, um, but I've not done that before. Let's go live now. Let's see if we can get everyone back again. <laughs> Okay, sorry about this. You chat amongst yourself. I'll have a chat to Lisa while you're on YouTube. Um, Andrew just habit, I suppose. So let's go there and over here. And it says Facebook's still connected, but it's not. Everyone's going to be thinking I'm not talking to them anymore. Where are you? Never comes back quickly, does it? Um, right. So I shall show everybody this again in just a second, but basically I'll push the lining inside the bag and because the lining is slightly longer, oh, come along, Facebook, for goodness sake. No, we don't want that. Is there anybody on YouTube that's on Facebook at the same time that can just let me know if I'm live on Facebook or not? Because I'm... Um, it's a bit concerned now. Bear with me. Um, you're still on Facebook. Oh, I'm still. Well, I can't. I can't see you. I'm afraid, so I'm not going to be able to look at your comments. What a silly thing to do. Right. Um, I'll, uh, anyway, I'll carry. On. If you can still see me, then I'll. I'll just carry on regardless without seeing any comments. Do apologise about that. Um, right, so the lining is now wider than the, um, deeper than the top, uh, the, oh, outer bag. So I'm going to top stitch around that to keep it in place. Oh, you're back again, honestly. So I'm going to take the free arm off. Um, excuse the rumble for just a second because I'm going to pop the aircon on because it's baking in here again. Um, and where are we there we go and i'm just going to top stitch around the top here like so <laughs> do you know saz it's honestly it's uh, sometimes it goes absolutely perfectly but when it goes wrong it doesn't often go wrong so again just folding that around the edge of the fabric and we'll top stitch. Now, given a little more time, it might have been quite nice to use a red and top stitch just underneath here. Or I could have put some, um, use some fancy stitches on the sewing machine if you like to use those. Oh, share. Sure. And just top stitch around. Um, you could press that before you do it if that, if that helps. Weltering in southwest France. I'd love to go to the south of France. It's one of my, my wish list areas to holiday. I don't think we're going anywhere for a while, even though we can. Right. This helps to hold hold everything in place, but I, I think the top stitching looks looks quite nice as well. And you've got pins. under there right so that's what I've got and again I, I will put the um, the instructions for this on um, on the website um, when I've finished here because I only made it this morning so I'm going to find the center of the front and the back just by folding this in half <coughs> and I'm just using an erasable is that erasable? Oh no, that's a biro. Um, an erasable ink pen, like so. And then I want to create these folds. So there's no particular measuring with this. I'm literally just taking, in fact, let, let's measure it. Let's do it properly. I didn't measure the other one. I just kind of gauged it by eye. And let's go. four inches from that mark four inches from that mark 
and we're going to take that point and fold it down to just underneath the center. Um, there we go. And the same on this side, so fold it down to just beneath the center. So you can see that brings the size of the bag in, so it's, it's beginning to, to have a shape. We'll do the same on this side as well. So one, two, three, four inches this way, one, two, three, four inches that way. Fold to the center and come down a little bit as well. If you fold it directly there, then it kind of changes the shape of the bag. So it's nice if you just drop it down by about an inch, like so. Pin in. And the same on this side just below the center and stick a pin in. So that's now going to be the size of the bag. Now if you wanted to make that a little bit wider, because that's going to be the opening, if you want to make it a little bit wider then you can kind of play and adjust with these bits and make them further apart. So before we actually sew these then just, just have a play around with them and make sure they're exactly where you want them to be and if you do move them around make sure that they're the same on both sides so the side seam still sits at the side so that's quite an unusual shape bag actually doesn't it so i've got that then i'm going to sew across here and then just a few stitches down, so across here and just a few stitches down again. Um, so let's do this with the free arm on the machine. I'm just looking. Yes, I have got glue. Is that stuck up? Nope. Going to need some glue as well. I'll show you that in just a second. So let's go. <laughs> I've done it again, haven't I? I've made everything go a little bit sideways. There we go. I must keep the mouth out of the way. So, across the top here. And then, I mean, this is quite a small opening, so make sure you're not sewing through both pieces of fabric. You see better there, I wonder and just a few stitches down the side. So I've just gone across here and a few stitches down the side. So same on this bit, I'll do that from the other direction. You could mark the start line for the stitches on the side if you want them to be absolutely perfect. So I've got that. That's starting to look really smart, isn't it? Let's just cut these bits off. Same on this one. Made the tote bag from the YouTube kids video. Oh, how lovely. Oh, must do some more of those videos. Must have some more days in the week. That'd help, wouldn't it? So into the side and down the side. And then one more to go. You could put a magnetic snap on there if you wanted it to close. Um, I think with a little bag like this, I don't see it's really necessary. I see this more of um, an evening bag or a going out for dinner bag. Something that you've got. Oh, the handles have gone. All right, okay. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> Make me jump. I'm taking orders. Don't take orders. You'll be here all day. You know what they're like. <laughs> Thank you. You can take me old cup back. Hmm? What, and fill it? No, don't fill it. I've got enough coffee. <laughs> um, other handles. Um, oh, let me think. Um... You could make, oh, that actually, that might be quite nice. You could make some handles. 
Um, if you, yes, that would be a nice idea. If you make up your handles and then pop them inside the fold before you put them together, you could make a bag like that. That'd work, wouldn't it? Purple flower cup, I think Lisa came from the range, somewhere like that, I can't remember. Um, yeah, that would make quite a nice little bag. So yes, make that, I'd do that, make your own. Um, or we do have some more handles coming in next week. Um, not exactly the same, they're, they're a little bit more expensive because they're bigger and they're, they're solid and they've got wood and the gold colour on them as well. That's going to be next Wednesday. You could do that. Shouldn't have said that, should I? Shouldn't have told you that one. So that's how the bag, that would have been nice actually. Yes, yeah, so I'd, I'd, to reiterate, if the handles have sold out but you still want to make this bag, then make up handles yourself and pop them inside those folds in here before you sew them together and then attach it that way. And then if you wanted to, you could make that um, a really long strap for a shoulder strap and still put the flap over the top if you wanted to, um, to fasten it with. That would be a nice idea. Um, why do I prefer to birth the bag from the inside seams when in some styles you should turn that from the top? From the inside seams. I don't know what he means, Kim. Why I prefer to birth a bag from the inside seams. There's different ways. Oh, do you mean so, so sometimes you can join the lining to the top of the bag and sew all the way around. Sometimes you can sew the two pieces together, then drop one inside the other and sew around the top. Is that, is that what he means? Explain. Um, right. Let's do these handles anyhow. Um, I'll just snip off my loose thread. So I'm going to put um, some of the interfacing on the wrong side of these pieces as well. So I'm not again using anything that's very thick. Um, so no fleece or anything like that. Because I think it's nice, a little bit softer, this bag. But it does need something. It needs something to give it a little bit of stability. Helen, I'm glad your subtitles are sorted. Right. Did I switch that off? No, I didn't. Um, I'll just put these on... Uh, I'll just put this on one side, not on both pieces. I don't think it needs them on both. I'm just seem to have lost heat in my iron. Oh, here we go. Um, can you please show us how to make a nice purse with magnetic snap, a card holder, and a zipped area? A zipped area. That's like a whist area. Why are you not going in? So my iron isn't getting hot enough. Don't know what's going on there. I'd use my spray instead. Away from the machine. I think I've got a problem with my extension cable. Um, right. That'll do. I keep going silent mid-sentence. I don't know what's going on there because it's not like me to go silent at all. Right, so these measure two and a half inches by 12 inches. If you're making um, regular handles for a bag, the only reason these are two and a half inches is because the gap in between here where it's going to go is two inches. So with a two quarter of an inch seam allowances, it makes it just the right size. But if you're making it as a proper handle, then I'd go for four inches wide and then fold it in half and fold it in half and make them that way. So I'm going to pop these right sides together. And I'm just going to cut across the corners at a 45 degree or at an angle. I don't know what angle it is, round about a 45 degree angle. But make sure these are mirror imaged because we're going to sew them together. 
Right, so I mean, use your, your ruler and your marking tools, your cutting mat, if you, if you want to be precise with those. So this back on here. And I'm going to sew all the way around, but leave a turning gap in one side. I shan't forget the gap this time. Morning, Dawn. Are we still more? We are still morning, just about, aren't we? It's Ten to twelve. A woman in the fabric shop says Whisper needs a walking foot. It depends on what you're sewing. Um, for the majority of projects, you don't need one. If you're going to be sewing um, any kind of laminated or like the faux leathers that we've got on the website, then a walking foot is really useful. But if it's sticky fabric like that, as in fabric that kind of sticks to the... So I, was, I think I've dropped my remote on that I have. I was going to turn this aircon off. It's freezing in there now. Um, if you are... Sorry, by the... Oh, excuse me. Oh, no, it's gone. Top of my head. I'll just have to freeze. Um... If you're sewing sticky fabrics or fabrics that will um, create friction with your presser foot, like laminated fabrics, you could use a non-slip foot instead, non-stick foot, sorry, uh, like a Teflon foot. Um, if you're quilting, then yes, I think you're going to need a walking foot because you're going to be sewing through lots of layers of fabric. A uh, walking foot sometimes called an even feed foot because it evenly feeds the fabric from the top at the same rate as the bottom. So if you've got lots of layers of fabric, that really will help. So again, whisper, it, it, it depends on what kind of sewing you want to do. If you're a dressmaker, I don't think you need one. Um, if you make a lot of bags again, maybe, but they are quite expensive. So don't rush out and buy one unless you really think you need one. See that on, on my main machine, Linda, on my, um, my Elna down in, in the office, um, it's got a built-in walking foot. So it's on there all the time. So I, I use it for everything. Um, not so much on this one, I don't. All right, let's turn these the right side out. See you later, Alison. Shall we see you on Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday, Wednesday at four o'clock is the next slide, if you can join me. Geometric face suitable for a laptop bag. Oh, I, I think that would look lovely. I love that um, geometric face fabric. I, I made a bag out of it, didn't I, somewhere? I haven't got it here. Um, I think that'd be perfect. It's really funky, and oh, we we do have. I haven't put them on the website yet because we've got to get them packaged. We've got some of those rainbow feet back in stock. Remember the rainbow hardware that we had? Um, it's come back in again. So I'm just looking for my my point turner to turn the points out. I think I need to reorganise them. I've got, I've got so much stuff. I don't know where it is. Use my old one. Staring at the bird fabric bag. The one behind me here is um, the fabric is off the website, it's canvas, and the bag is one that Sheena made for me from my book, Half Yard Bags and Purses. Yeah, so I'm glad you like that. Thank you. So I'm just pushing out the corners. These can be as long as you like as well. You could actually tie them into a bow. Thank you, Jason. Oh, thank you, Denise. Did you get me an email about your fabric? Um, hello, Glennis in Australia. She loves watching as well. Alex is in Australia too. Cold here tonight, she says. Oh, it's freezing in here. <laughs> Not complain. I, you know, I'd rather be cold than hot in here. I have to admit, when it's hot in here, it's like a sauna. I get, I get all shiny and melty. Well, the gold pearl handles exactly. Will the gold pearl handles exactly like those ones back in the ten days? It says on the website. I didn't know it said ten days on the website, Carol. They're not going to be back in stock again. Once, once they've sold out, we're not going to get any more. Um, it's, it's a little bit. I know they. They're only very minor flaws, but they are flaws all the same, so I didn't want to get those back in stock again. 
Why have you gone cold? Right, I have another iron plugged in down here. It's the big one. Let me, um, got another extension cable, so just bear with me a second. While we wait for this beast to heat up. Right. Oh, Lynn's been trimming the lilac. Oh, how lovely. How to make that bag with a handle made from fabric. This one. Oh, this one. Um, do you know, I could do that on YouTube, couldn't I? I've, I've started to, because we, we get, we're so, we do chatty um, on these lives. Um, for those of you who only want to see the tutorial, I've been doing that on YouTube. Um, and I wasn't going to with this one because I knew that the handles were going to be sold out and then I start getting messages saying, what's the point in doing that when I can't buy the handles? But yes, that's a good idea. I shall make another one this afternoon and try and get it on YouTube. I don't know, don't know how soon that'll be. You were having a bad day today. I never have a bad day, Patricia. Well, I do. I do, but I'm not admitting it. There's always, there was a, always a... Um, a bright side to look on, isn't it? Um, yeah, I shall do that. That's a good idea. So it might be on tomorrow morning. Because when I do the YouTube ones, I film them and edit them and everything, so, and put the measurements on in all kinds of languages. So I've got, <laughs> I've got my microphone caught, and it was, anyway. So, this is how we're going to do this. Just move things out of the way and make it a little bit tidier for you. Um, so these are going to go, I'm going to sew around those in a second, I'll need to sew around those. They're going to go around there like that and then sew to the front of the bag. But I don't want to see any stitches here. So I could sew straight across there, but I don't want to see the stitches. So I am going to glue. So I'm going to work out where I want these to sit. And I think they're quite nice when they're not quite even. And then lift that up and sew across here. Then put the handle on, then I'm going to glue it. I'm going to stitch around though. Sorry, I missed a step out there. So let's get on with that one first. And I'll go through that again in just a second. I need that point poking out. I have one of the, um, the prim, turners somewhere it's got a nice sharp point but I can't see it probably you can that's not a very pointy point that's better I do mean actually it's huge in here I just take up a very small amount <laughs> so I need a, a little bit of reorganization in the studio I think so that we can take everything back a little bit there's my little area here, there's actually a big L-shaped place, so I've got studio space here, and then Kim's got a studio at the other end of the studio. So maybe I'll take off that. What can we do with the fluffy bits if we don't have the handles? I'll, I'll come up with something for YouTube, because I'm, I'm thinking, you could, I, you could just add that, couldn't you? That might be... We'll have a look in just a minute when I've sewn around here. That might be quite nice. Go on. You know, sometimes when your feed dogs just want to eat your fabric. Do you know, girl? Do you know, as well, biscuits? Oh, sorry, you're chatting amongst yourselves again. I feel like I'm in. I'm eavesdropping in your conversations. Could you ask Debbie if she's going to get the bird canvas on it? I shall ask my daughter. I didn't know we'd sold out of it, to be honest. But uh, Kim, if you're watching, um, Andrea wants the bird canvas back in stock, please. I don't do the ordering. This is um, the, the entire website is down to my daughter. So everything that's on there, entirely her choice. And I think she does a jolly good job. And I'm just about to run out of bobbin thread. Maybe just at the right time. I'm keeping 
keeping an eye on it though because like I said earlier, I hate it when that bottom thread runs out and you carry on sewing. It's gone. There we go. Let's see if I've got another one. Nope. Bear with me for a couple of seconds while I just do this. Could we have the flappy bits? That would be a lovely idea, Violet. I'm, I'm taking all of this in to um, think of something for my, for what I'm going to do on YouTube. Oh, it's coming down, bear with me. So yes, a covered button to add the flappy bits would be a really nice idea. You say some nice things, you daft lot. Right. Might use that new fabric for the bag as well. I think that would be rather nice. Um, okay, let's do that, do that. Pop you back in there. Pop the lid on, finish sewing around here. Then we'll have a play and see what it looks like. I only came up with the idea for the bag. In fact, things evolve, don't they? I wanted a bag that was bigger than you'd expect for little handles like this. Um, so I was only playing around this morning and came up with this, but it's actually turned out rather well, I think. But yes, we shall have another play with it before I do the YouTube video and see if we can come up with something even better now we haven't got the handles anymore. So what I'm thinking, if, you, ha, it's hot. Um, if you've got your handles like that, you could still do that nick in there and then the button on the front here would look really nice wouldn't it can we imagine that i think we might do that and i think i might do the button idea as well that was really good hmm. what have i got planned for the rest of the weekend our lisa and what i work i work seven days a week so after i've finished here I don't think I need the iron anymore, do I? Um, <laughs> I have iron fanning the skin on my wrist. Um, after I finish this, I'll be doing some filming. Oh, no, after I finish this, I'm going to be straight on the website and see if anybody needs their um, passwords resetting, because that's going to be my job for the next um, half hour or so, if anybody does need any help. Then I shall come back up here when I found the remote, switch that thing off because it's freezing, and, um, and do some filming. I still need to do a video of the, um, the wine glass coasters that we did on Thursday. Um, and we'll do a video of this, so the rest of the afternoon we'll probably be editing. And then Sunday's office day, so I, I go down to the office and meet up with Kim and we go through orders and things like that, so that's a whole day. So weekends are actually probably the busiest time of the week for me. The button in the lining fabric would be ideal. I think I should do that, Janine. The website address, I can, I can write that down for you while we're here. Um, Debbyshawzone.com. Have a perusal. It's, it's new. We up updated the website um, a couple of weeks ago, so it's, it's very quick and it's very efficient. And I'm really excited about it. Um, but we are having email issues, as in emails not going out. So we're, we're taking orders. We're busier than we've ever been. But it's just that the confirmation emails aren't going out at the moment. But we are looking into that. That will be resolved. Pronto. Right. Well, next week, hopefully. So again, this is what I'm going to do. I folded that in half. I, th I, th I think one slightly longer than the other looks nice. And that's the top of the bag. So I want that to be at the top. And then my handle is just going to slip underneath there. So while I've got that in the position that I want it to be, I'm going to flip that up and just stick a pin in it. And I'm just going to sew straight across here. And then we'll do the same on the opposite side. So 
that out of the way. So again, that's I'd like to go there. That looks quite nice. Flip it open. Stick a pin in. And sew straight across. Hello Delia in California. Nice to have nice to have you live as well. Yes, you did hear dog's footsteps. Um, Bobbin's actually come in on uh, she was here the other day actually and uh, Kim I have put a cover on your sofa. Um, I was saying that Kim's got her studio at the other end of, of the building here um, and she's got a sofa in her little set and Bobbin loves it. Don't you? You like it then? Um, so uh, she wouldn't be best pleased having a dog on the sofa, but I have put a blanket over it for her. She loves that sofa. You've got very sharp hearing, you lot. And that's her going back out again. Um, OK, so we've got this. So I'm now going to put the handles just underneath here. Now I'm going to glue. But I think your idea of adding a button is really nice. I just didn't want to see stitching because it, it needs to be secure right underneath the handle here or else that's just going to wobble around and I didn't want to see the stitching which is why I decided to glue but if you put a button there I think that would work just as well but I'm going to use my HT2 and I'm just going to put a drizzle of glue under here so I'm not gluing onto the actual frame but very close to it and then, of course, if you wanted to glue this in place down here so it doesn't move around, that's entirely up to you. So let's stick a pin in there just while it dries. And we'll do the same on this side. I'll get a little blob of glue across here. Thread that on. And stick it down. So these could be longer, as I said, if you wanted to put them on, um, in bows, that would look nice. You could have used the contrast fabric that I used for the lining. Um, that would have looked nice as well. So have a go at being your own bag designer and see what kind of things that you can come up with. But I think that's really sweet. It's something a little bit different. And as I said before, the whole idea of creating this style of bag was to take handles that you'd normally expect to be on a really small purse and make it into quite a nice sizable ba bag. Share, I, I say it every week, don't I? I must get Bob Cam set up again. I've got three cameras, so I'm sure I can po point one down it. No, I was going to do that and have a drink in her direction. Um, what are you looking for, Joyce? Is that the Half Yard Club member discount? Lisa, you're right, thank you. Go to the About Me tab. It's on there, lovely. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Oh, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. Um, Alexa, this is a Gutemann HT2 glue. We've got, got it on the website. It's an incredibly strong glue and it's permanent. So it's a wet glue, it's clear. Um, but that's that's not going to come undone it's the only if i'm if i'm gluing a, a metal frame to a bag so if i'm making something with one of these type of things this is the only glue that i'll use because it's really really tough you'll find the fabric will tear before the glue comes apart it's so strong so you've got a little bit of, of wiggle time while it dries it does dry quite quickly but you can maneuver things around for a couple of seconds um but then yes it does become permanent it's it's really really strong hello um yeah, it, it's, I'll warn you, make sure that the lid is on as soon as you stop because it does tend to pour out a little bit and once then gets scunched up it's really difficult to poke it through. So just make sure that you always put the lid back on as soon as you finish gluing, wipe the end maybe, stick the lid back on again, but it's, it's the only glue that I use. Sheena, you're late and we've, we're finished now, you missed everything. Um, if I can take that out. Yes, I think that's just about dry now. So you can have a proper look. Oops, up you go. So that's it finished. So again, nice size of bag. 
Um, this one, it was actually a little bit shorter. This one's bigger. Um, this one was made with the rose gold fur, fur leather that we've got on the website, so that makes a really nice evening bag. But I like this in the Christmas fabric as well. That would make a nice little Christmas gift, wouldn't it? And you do have quite a wide opening on there. You know, you can still get your hand in there get, and uh, ki keep quite a few bits and bobs. So it's nice to have, I think, um, a an evening bag that's big enough to keep all your bits in, not a little tiny one that you can't even fit a phone in. Um, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so we'll try and get something on YouTube with different handles later on or maybe tomorrow. And I shall see you again on Wednesday, if you're there, at four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we're going to be doing different bag handles, the, the ones I mentioned earlier on with the wooden bits. I'm going to be doing the bag with those. I'll, I'll make it quite a big one, I think. Um, so that's going to be on Wednesday. So thanks for your company today. It's been really nice chatting to you. Um, are you with your phone? Sorry, that's, I thought it was Kim. It's my son. I don't know why he wants my phone. Um, Shirley, send me a message. You should have had um, a newsletter this morning. But send me a message to customer service at debbyshawsewing.com and I'll reset the password for you. Has that come up there? Yes, there you go. So that's that one. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you, Alexis. I'm glad you enjoy it. Uh, so, right, again, I shall see you again next week. I better go and, uh, and get on with some work. I shall see you again on Wednesday. So thanks to your company. Um, I've had a lovely time. I hope you have too. And I shall see you very soon. Bye-bye.